information. You have control of it, you drive the deal. The other side has control of it, you take it from them. It's like a game. Cold Winter is a first person shooter that was developed by Swordfish Studios, published by Vivendi, and released on the PS2 in May of 2005. According to the reviews at the time, it was considered an average shooter with a better than average story, and received mostly sixes and sevens from the majority of critics. Now, our story begins with our main character, Andrew Sterling, being thrown into a prison cell somewhere in China. Sterling is a former member of the SAS, currently working for MI6. It appears he was captured while on a mission in China and to avoid an international incident, MI6 deletes all files and information on him, declares him dead and cuts all ties. After being trapped and tortured in his cell for six months, an old colleague named Kim sneaks into the prison and breaks him out, and then takes Sterling to meet an old SAS friend named Daniel Parrish. Parrish offers him the opportunity to work for his private security agency, and as Sterling is looking to return the favour, he accepts, and this is where our game really begins. Moving forward, the story is a bit strange if I'm honest. In one sense, it features a bunch of straightforward plot lines that focuses on secret organisations trying to influence the world, and a lot of talk centred around nuclear warfare. It all feels very Tom Clancy-ish. On the other side of the story is a number of scenes that reflect on the past and are narrated by Sterling and other characters. It tries to give you a little insight into who the characters are and their motivations, but they kind of come out of nowhere and feel slightly disjointed. Whoever wrote the narrative and dialogue for the game was clearly going for something here. There are some pretty lengthy cutscenes and it's obvious that their aim was to give the characters some real depth and craft an interesting James Bond-like story that subverts expectations from time to time. While some of the chatter between characters can border on cringeworthy, it does a good job of making you care just that little bit more about the characters. Now, in the case of Cold Winter, this is where most of the compliments end, sadly, as although it has an above average story for a video game, it is a below average shooter. The game is made up of a series of missions where you'll be given a few main objectives and the occasional side objective, such as grab this, turn that off or blow this up, as you progress through the semi-linear environments. This is nothing revolutionary of course, but at the same time, it's not something to hold against the game. There is a good amount of action and the campaign is very much all guns blazing, with moments of optional stealth that fall apart very easily and just become firefights nine times out of ten. Now, I've said this a bunch of times in my reviews and I'll say it again when discussing this game. When it comes to shooters, the shooting has to feel right, and this is where Cold Winter stumbles somewhat. There is a lack of precision to the controls that is slightly assisted by the auto-aim, but your weapon tends to sway just a little too much when caught in frantic situations that should be fun but are more frustrating as you take several shots before you can line up a shot of your own. In short, the action isn't fun, and larger shootouts are more of a chore rather than a challenge as you wrestle with the flimsy controls and weightless weapons to try and survive. Possibly one bright spot to the action is the large number of weapons available. This is definitely an area in which Cold Winter does not disappoint. It's just a shame that the shooting isn't as snappy as it should be. Also thrown in with the weapons is a selection of craftable items. A few of these are just variants of explosives, but you can also craft lockpicks that will help you open a door here and there and could reward you with ammo or body armour. What is quite interesting about this game is the physics engine that's induced that allows you to interact with pretty much every item in front of you. Boxes and barrels can be picked up and thrown, tables can be dragged and flipped over to create cover. This is all a nice addition but never comes into play or is ever that useful so it is a bit of a wasted opportunity if I'm honest. However, the way some enemies ragdoll after being killed is pretty darn entertaining. In terms of visuals, Cold Winter is hit and miss. Some areas look well designed and quite polished, other environments look slightly empty and bland, and all of this only adds to the feeling that Cold Winter could have used a bit more time in the oven. Obviously, the physics in play here do add quite a bit to the game in this regard, and objects fly across the room or break apart any time you lob a grenade, and what is also impressive is the way enemies' limbs occasionally fall off if you shoot them in the right place.
Weapon models and character models are both passable. You might expect a little better from a game in 2005, but they are not hideous by any stretch. I also thought that the cutscenes were animated and directed quite well. Once again, Cold Winter is at its best when story is centre stage, and the cutscenes do have a bit of cinematic flair to them, which is definitely to be appreciated. The sound quality does leave much to be desired. While the effects for explosives and gunfire aren't horrendous, some of the enemy voice work is of very low quality. Sorry, you worthless piece of shit! Give me your gun. Sir, I... Give me your fucking gun! Oh! Fucking maggot! So what can I say about Cold Winter overall? If I had to sum it all up in one tagline, I'd say that this is a game that deserved better. I can see a genuine effort here to tell a story with much more nuance than your usual FPS of this era, but it is let down by gameplay that needed another few months of tweaking and visuals that needed another few months of cleaning up. There is a good game buried at the bottom of Cold Winter, and if I was to give you any advice on this one, it would be to play the game on its easy difficulty and enjoy the story so that you're done with it in a weekend. Ah!